Hello and welcome to the Greg Fearon podcast with your host Greg Fearon and today we have my ex co-host <laughs> back in the game Julian D. <laughs> hey Greg, how you doing? Long how you doing? Time. I know, I know, I know. I feel like I've I've gone to a different place and now I've come back. <laughs> you just left me in the pot of ocean. <laughs> Clinging onto a life raft of my own. Yeah. <laughs> Good to have you on the yeah, show. Thank you. No, I'm delighted to be back. Good to chat to you. Good to chat to you. What's been happening? Uh, yeah, I've just, oh, well, just life and yeah, and unfortunately not very good circumstances either. So I think it's just a case of you got to take steps back and just let yourself kind of recover from, from, you know, really kind of, yeah, really, really tough times, really, so. Yeah, I know how that feels. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so now I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe maybe the summer helps as well, that you're just ready to kick back into it and, yeah, come back. Awesome. You miss our podcasts. Of course I do. Of course yeah. I do. Well, the podcast was rocking. <laughs> <laughs> it's great now, but it's, it was, I don't know, we had a flow, we had a vibe. Yeah, people expected yeah. us to be on a podcast together, so yeah, yeah, we get to this oh, thing today. Will be fun, yeah, absolutely. So, do a juicy one, aren't we? Yeah, so the topic, ladies, today is why getting a PT hasn't helped you lose weight. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, tasty it one. is a good one. So, you know, with this. Yeah, I guess, you know, having a PT background almost kind of, you know, it almost kind of holds you back because people keep talking to you as if you are a PT and that's what you do, even though you've moved on and it's almost like you, you yeah, you do have to constantly kind of tell people what the difference is and, and some people get it, some people don't. So um, the do difference. You, do you think that's because that's kind of always been the way of the world is was like if you wanted to get fit you either go to a, sl- a slimming club mm-hmm. or you go and get a personal trainer well that is, but therein lies the difference then of getting fit or wanting to lose weight not necessarily you know it, and and using maybe generic terms like that like it's such a broad spectrum isn't it i think mm-hmm. so you know people you know and you know, understandably that that's what your first thought is that oh God, I need to do something. I need to get in shape. I need to lose weight. Uh, you know, if that's, that's your aims, that's your goals. Your first thought, Oh, I need a PT. When in actual fact, it's probably something that you've tried many times before and it's never worked like everything else that you've tried before. And certainly, you know, the, the women that we talk to, Greg, you know, have tried lots of different things and it's never worked. And that's, Therein lies the piece of the puzzle. Why hasn't it ever worked? It's uh, it's funny because I was saying to someone earlier, actually today, just saying how I actually get better results with the ladies who I don't see and I coach, mm-hmm. who I don't see like in person, so they have to do burpees or whatever, than the people I have who stand in front of me and train. And I don't know about you, I put that down to the fact that when you're coaching someone, you're changing the behaviours that they need to fix outside of getting sweaty. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like people who go for a one-to-one PT think that that one or two sessions a week is going to save them from all of the multitude of other issues that they've got going on. Yeah, absolutely. And even just turning up thinking, well, it, it's about taking ownership and responsibility for what you're doing. If you If you are committed to one hour, two hours, three hours a week with a PT. And as long as you do that, you feel like you're doing something, um, you know, uh, but you turn up and you're just like going, I'll just do whatever you tell me. You know, you're never really owning that journey. You're never really taking responsibility because, you know, how many other hours there are in the day, in the week, you know, to, to do things for yourself. and. And um, and that was one of the things that that I that made me want to make the switch from personal training to coaching, mm-hmm. um, was because 
it was never around about you know telling someone how many sets and reps of an exercise to do you know when when you knew there was a lot more going on on in their lives so you know it was to have those kind of deeper conversations to give someone that space if you like to to talk about what's what's troubling them, what's their obstacles, what's, you know, and, and help them move forward, you know, so, um, yeah, so, and, and it's quite a classic thing whenever I, I get new people, you know, I've got a new person to sign up and I'm starting to work with them and, the, you know, the, their instant reaction is, tell me what to eat, tell me what exercises to do, and that's it, that's because, you know, that that's what they've always had and that's what their expectations are, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, I don't actually tell anybody what to eat and I don't actually tell anybody what workouts to do <laughs> until like, I, I'll, I'll see whether they are ready for a workout for training programs. Not everybody is, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. not everybody, not everybody, you know, if someone hasn't done any exercise for a year or two years, you know, I'm not about to throw a workout plan at them because they're not ready for it. They're not, you know. Um, there's, seems, there's many more steps to go ahead so yes, it's, um, it was like but if I come and stand in front of you Gillian and you make me do really you know really strenuous exercise the fat's just going to melt off me <laughs> oh yeah yeah sure it will um, but that's the other thing yeah and we know as well for people particularly if, if weight loss and you know if that's the aim and you want to a little weight loss I kind of have my own little things around using using that term it's a bit of a yeah it's, it's around about you know health gaining shall we say or you know strength gaining or whatever fitness gaining you know you want to you know focus on a lot there's a lot of other things that need to get in place before you even get to mm-hmm. you know working out and doing those sorts of things so yeah you know personal trainer would work great alongside a coach yeah possibly yeah if you wanted if someone did actually want that face-to-face just to have someone there to tell them what workouts to do then fine Mm -hmm. you know um but there's still that element of coaching of of helping people to navigate what behaviors what's causing them to to stop or or you know or to just not make the progression that they want to, you know, those sorts of th- those conversations. And, and that's, you know, that's where coaching really does come into it. So. Mm. And that's, that's why we focus on, you know, it's the behavior change. Yeah. So. I was just, I was just going to say that, like, I know you're very focused on changing the behavior rather than, like you said, sets, reps, mm-hmm. eat this food, because we both know that, behavior change and habit change is where actually the results happen right yeah definitely and and i'd even go one step it's around about changing the identity and how you see yourself yeah Mm -hmm. because a lot of it stems back to self-esteem really and 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 how much we value it but that could go up in a whole different conversation we can go there in a minute (laughs) this this is gonna be the longest podcast ever i know (laughs) I know we've missed each other, but I think that's the like, important thing <laughs> as well, though, right? Is because it's almost like if I put 40 quid a week into a PT or whatever it is, like that almost gives the responsibility of that 40 quid a week is going to fix my life and make me brilliant. And I think that comes from the celebrity world as well. People will see a celebrity who's like, yeah, I worked out of a PT. Um, but often that celebrity is paid a more than forty pounds an hour for for their PT, and that PT is also doing additional stuff like nutrition coaching mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So what people or, think again, oh. or else they have someone separate that does the nutrition side of things, or someone that does the kind of maybe maybe a therapist or a coach and someone a life coach or whatever. You know, they might have someone that that fills each of those different areas. But I feel like if I just put it that 40 quid in for the week, Mm. that's going to be my fix all for everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's just feeding into that kind of, well, you know, it's a bit of 
like scarcity as well so that you're you'll just pay that amount and, and you'll just keep chipping away because it gives you those little hits of dopamine doesn't it and you feel good because you've done that and you think oh yeah I feel good but then you could do that and, and we, we're probably high. I've had people as well done that for months with me when I was a personal trainer didn't see any changes didn't get any got stronger but yeah. in terms of weight loss no yeah. not really even you know and even guy you know I had guys and stuff that I trained with and yeah strength through the roof but turns out actually weight loss from that yeah and you know and and it wasn't because of the effort it was just the you just there's so much else that goes on and with it and and that's really what people need is accountability and and you know knowing that there's someone that's gonna right hold them accountable what have you done this week what's been happening what's going on in your life and and where do you need help with you know so um and and that's really where the power actually is someone who cares so know? i think you said something earlier that made me kind of just it, i get i had an analogy in my head that getting that pt and just paying that 40 pounds a week 80 quid a week maybe is like approaching your your transfer your body transformation with a snack mentality rather than going in and getting the free course meal of a coach yes yeah, yeah. so we'll happily snack at it each week and not actually really commit and i think that's what happens when you do a, the hourly rate and that's what i found anyway is yeah. like you said it's that little dopamine hit oh, i've done my 40 quid of worth of training whatever that however, however people equate that to i have no idea yeah. um rather than actually do you know what i'm actually going to go all in and go and get this sorted once and for all yeah and as long as that person has just had a really good workout and felt like they've really been pushed in, they'd be happy with that. Yeah. Um, but again, particularly if we're talking about weight loss and if, you know, if a particular person who is of a larger size and they do, you know, they want to make significant changes to that, you know, like there's only so much you can do in a gym, you know, initially anyhow. So, you know, and I know there's been a lot of kind of cases where, where BSE, either PTs or, or fitness trainers or whatever would say, I don't work with anyone over, or they don't want, not that they don't want to help, but they can't help people of a certain size, you know, depending on their services, because they're like, well, I need you to get to a certain point first before you can really get involved in whether it's their small group sessions or whatever else, because, you know, obviously there's limitations physically mm. when when people are of a, of a certain size so um and you know i've heard of people even locally that that would say that as well because you know again it comes down to even just doing the basics you know and the simple things like like we we often go on about that that people often overlook because they're looking for a more complicated solution to to their problems so um which you you, you know a pt doesn't don't, don't worry some burpees in the park will fix it <laughs> throw some sandbags around and yeah do a kettlebell badly and that'd be fun yeah, don't get me wrong <laughs> but yeah um you know when someone you know is maybe struggling to walk more than 10 minutes it's mm -hmm. you know let's start there yeah a personal trainer to help you walk like you know just those sorts of things and you know, sleep. Are you hydrated? Are you, you know, do you eat enough vegetables? Do you, you know, and <laughs> it sounds very childlike, but you know, that's 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 really where we go in terms of just those behaviours and that. You, you almost saying that, like, when clients come and work with us, we just give them basic stuff to do, mm, and they yeah. get awesome transformations, right? Absolutely. Like I even just finished with someone recently and um, for 12 weeks and and they even said how the feeling of overwhelm and that's what it is that's what stops people from from reaching out for help because it's been drilled into them so many times that there's got to be this huge you know i've got to clear out all the foods and i've got to like bust my ass in the gym or whatever four five times a week you know and it's this 
kind of sense of overwhelm that I'm, I'm going to have to do so much, it's going to consume my life. Mm. When in actual fact, if something is going to consume your life that much, it's going to put a lot of stress and a lot of pressure on you and you're just not going to enjoy it and you're not going to effectively embody the things that you need to do. So, um, yeah, yeah so that's really where we come in. We're like, let's remove all the stress. Let's remove all that. Let's slow everything down. Hmm. You probably find this yourself, Greg, like I have women coming in and just give me this, give me that, you know, and then they're like a hundred miles an hour. And I'm like, right, well, let's just slow things down a little bit, you know, and, and they're like, well, how's your sleeping? Uh, you know, and they're like, well, I sleep fine. <laughs> but then when you delve a little deeper, like, well, I had to get some work done. And so I stayed up to like midnight that night and then I'm up, but I'm up at this time. And then, you know, and all of a sudden you start to hear the different stories of how their sleep pattern is all over the place. And, you know, so again, it's like, if someone's not asking you those questions, you just gloss over the it. personal trainer are going to stop and ask you, you know, how's your sleep? How's that going? You know, are they going to have that time? Do you, do you pay them that time to sit and talk to you about? That's an interesting point, actually. You just hit that. You just hit struck a very valid point about why like, people pay for the exercise. Basically, that's what they pay for. That's in their own heads, anyway. Mm. So even being that kind of well, I still do some one to one, but often if someone's got a weight loss goal I, I don't we don't do any exercise for 20 minutes I'm talking about what's really going on first mm -hmm. before we even do a stretch <laughs> yeah and people are like but I come to get to lose to lose weight I'm like well yeah but as you said earlier Julian it's like well how are you sleeping mm -hmm. and you don't have that ability in a one-to-one -one session to start asking all of the deep questions about what's really going on yeah you yeah. can you can hide in a pt session and go and smash it out of the park and sweat sweat to your yeah you get full like old false eyelashes come out but not actually talk about what's really going on i think that's where the results that you get actually happen yeah yeah definitely definitely you know sometimes it's just to have that kind of calm moment and calm and voice and someone that's there to just calm you down and, and ground you for for an hour mm. and then let you talk or let you you know tell you what's going on is more valuable than than someone telling you to do 10 push-ups or whatever you know so um particularly you know in the world that we live in it's that's like 100 miles an hour so you know um and yeah i just so much more value, so much more, you know, long-term results, so much more establishing long-term change where someone just really, really comes from just coaching them and empowering people. And that's something I hear a lot back from my clients. Is I just feel empowered to make these changes now, you know, mm -hmm. they know what's working for them and, and you're like, yeah, yep. Yeah. And you're almost like just going, yeah, Keep going, keep going, you know, and, and that's Bring on. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So, and I, I had the question in my head and I just need to phrase it the right way. When ladies do approach you and they say, oh, hey, Julian, I need to lose some weight. Do you do PT? What do you say to them? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, I uh, my first question was like, well, why do you need a PT? Yeah. Or why do you think you need a PT, should I say? Mm. And, and and sometimes I would get, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's what's worked before and, and getting a PT, it's been a strategy that they've done before starting a different diet or something, you know, that they've seen work for someone else, you know, it's what worked before they go back to that. You know, there's all these different strategies and tools, and, and that's what they are. They're all like this big toolkit. Um, and, you know, uh, that's basically where I would start with someone. Why, why do you think you need a PT? And if you need a PT now, why hasn't it worked for you in the past? So that's kind of where I go to. 
Yeah, makes so. total sense. Makes total sense. And so, yeah. so when ladies do come to you and they decide that actually they're going to actually get the problem fixed and are actually going to work with you, what are kind of the, the most common challenges that these ladies come up with? I think it's just, it's time. <laughs> Allowing themselves time. Mm -hmm. And... I think maybe the pandemic has made it harder as well, you know, with what's changed, you know, women feel more under pressure because everyone's ended up coming back home or, you know, and um, like I even have ladies who, you know, they have responsibility for other people, you know, in terms of their career and their job, but who are all looking to them to, you know, are we going to get back? to you know different things that they used to do before the pandemic and you know and all of a sudden all these people that that stopped are now looking to come back and do all the things that they want to do and you know so there's a lot of I think for a lot of women it's a good opportunity to, to kind of re-establish a lot of boundaries in their lives because mm -hmm. I think that's where it really comes down to yeah um it's really weird. I had a very similar conversation with another coach this morning about the same thing. Yeah, it's just re-establishing that. I think it's just to... Because a lot of things had stopped and, and weren't allowed, I think it's given people a lot of breathing space to realise how much they allowed to take over their lives. And, and, mm -hmm. and their health and their well-being has suffered as as uh, you know as a result of that and um but now they want just that help then to you know there's a lot of women you know they know what they should be doing but just still can't get themselves to do it and, oh, and wonder that why line, that line that immortal line yeah. i know what to do but i'm just not doing it uh, yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah, and it's um and, you know, even though there's some, like, people work with who's, who who would say that they know a lot of stuff, but actually when you end up working with them, there's still stuff that they don't, and probably don't know as much stuff as they do. And that can stop you because you think, well, I know, I know what I need to do. I know, but, well, do you? Because you might not, actually. You, mm -hmm. you probably don't. And then maybe it's just the ego getting in the way there that's telling you, oh, no, I know everything. Um, well, because we watched the program on the BBC about how to lose weight well or something or whatever. Yeah. Who knows? I haven't actually watched TV. Yeah. I don't really watch TV. I have no idea what's even on. Um, uh, yeah, so, you know, that's kind of, that is the biggest, biggest obstacle for women and, and certainly around with their family and family get-togethers and family occasions, being able to voice mm -hmm. what they're comfortable with what their boundaries are and expressing them yeah for you know it's almost like setting your stall out early just going yeah i'm happy to do this but i'm going to do this this and this but you guys are cool rock on i'm just going to do my own thing over here you know um and that's been a big you know that's been a big learn for i think for a lot of women Mm. Not to feel like they're they're alienating themselves out of the family, you know. You know and, and, and you don't because you know it's okay if you if you would rather do something different, it doesn't you know, whether it's down to foods or, you know, uh, those sorts of things, then yeah, cool. So I think that's what it comes down to, is that that boundary setting really. So I think that's a that's a really big point. I think a lot of ladies are are scared of being the skinny one in the in the group of people who sit there and moan about not ch not losing weight because it becomes almost like a bit of a joke and then if you then try and come out of it mm -hmm. you're not in the tribe anymore you can't be in that tribe yeah. and that's what it's that's what that's what ladies are scared of yeah and you probably even find that yourself because of the nature of the work that you do that people will make quips and comments and Oh, should you be eating that or should you be oh. drinking that? You know, and things like that. There, oh, I didn't think you'd, you know, or, or you'd have questions like, 
you know, do you eat, do you eat fast food? Do you eat, and you're like, yeah, sometimes, if I feel like it, but, you know, it's not my go-to. <laughs> I'm not at McDonald's every day, like, but, you know, <laughs> actually, I haven't been to McDonald's in don't know how long, but, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's that sort of, you get that. So uh, we even get that, uh, even just being, you know, in terms of, like, you know, of the nature of the work we do, so, but, you know, it's, it's cool. If anyone has a problem with it, then that's their problem. <laughs> you know? well, it's, it's normally a look at first, isn't it? It's like everyone's eating, it's like... <laughs> yeah. And then the elbow... The, 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 the PT is eating something they shouldn't <laughs> be eating. And they, then they pluck up the curries to do the, should you be eating that? And you're like, yeah. why is it... And I'm like, oh my God, is it poisonous? something wrong with it? <laughs> yeah. I just hate the Mickey now. <laughs> But even, even actually, if you think about it, and if, if you want to relate it to the whole COVID situation, it's like this whole people setting their own boundaries about whether they want to wear a mask or not, whether they want to get a vaccine or not, whether they, you know, and people are just holding their own, basically, based on whatever it is, they, they feel that they don't want to do something or they want to do something. Yeah. That's cool. But don't get annoyed just because someone else doesn't want to do what you do. You know what I mean? So it's and it's the same. It's the same with the women, and certainly the women I work with on family occasions. You know, just say no. Uh, you know, or I'm happy to have this, but I don't want anything more, or hmm. I don't want to do that. You know. Well, I think there's a big fear of offending other people, which is a big one. You know, especially around food, especially where I've I've got quite a few Asian clients, and it's food is very much front and center so if you then get offered food and you reject it it's seen as an affront to the person who's offering you food i'm like yeah you need to get over that <laughs> you offended what does that mean <laughs> i'm offended oh, okay and so <laughs> you know. this ancient tradition that means you must eat every the ancient tradition means you must eat everything that i give you on your plate you see <laughs> Just, wow Time for a new tradition you know okay yeah if you want to be respectful and that but you know people should respect what you want as well so you know it's and and that's kind of that's that's how you know you traditions and cultures have been just entrenched in people's lives for so long you know it's, that's the belief system isn't it yeah i've been brought up this way so i have to follow this way and you know i must get a pt yeah, <laughs> I must God, get. Where is this going? This is going off in one minute. It's like... No, no, no. This is, this is good stuff. This is the, this is the important stuff that people I think need to hear. Yeah, a, I think, I think. And one thing I, I say with as well with the, you know with women we speak to, you know, they're, they're not. You know, everyone is highly intellectual. Everyone, you know, the last thing. Uh, one thing I always say to people, like, was, do you actually want someone to tell you what to eat? Like, are you actually telling me that you want someone to tell you what you should put in your mouth and eat every single day? Well, that's an abdication of responsibility, I think. I can tell you, if someone told me what to eat, it would probably last about 30 seconds. <laughs> and go, well, no, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. you, you have to eat chicken and broccoli every day. <laughs> you know that, don't you? That's the only way you can... Get Instagram yeah. a bit. <laughs> it's got to be seasoned. <laughs> broccoli, the wraps. <laughs> I probably do eat broccoli most days, but not with chicken. <laughs> Is it seasoned though? No. no. <gasps> it would be in a curry or a stir fry or something. Oh, well, there's got to be some seasoning on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't just bland grey chicken, right? Well, but a roast dinner I would just have steamed broccoli. Like, for... Yeah. Oh, yeah. season the chicken. Yeah. No. Just roast it. Okay. I, I can, yeah. I, I'm like, I like <laughs> marinate that stuff the night before. <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before it goes anywhere near anything. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I think, um, and I see it a lot, you know, people are meal offering, oh, they've offered me a meal plan, but I think I've almost felt people have to feel like they collect, they, they've gone to someone and they collect stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, I've got I've got this meal plan. I've got this recipe book. I've got this all these workouts, and then two weeks later, like, oh, how's that all going? Yeah, I stopped doing it. And then they go and find another six week plan, 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, and that's then looking at the wrong thing because you're looking at what, what you can, what you get for your money, you know, or as... I say to people, you know, I, I'm gonna change your life. <laughs> people are like going, and I think that scares people. They're like going, what the hell? You know, what does that mean? Like, what are you yeah. gonna do to me? You know, but and and again, you can have conversations with people, and people have actually been quite afraid because you've maybe asked them something, and they're like, oh my, my, what? You know, where's where's this going? Type of thing. And it kicks off a lot of fear because they're not ready to maybe face, you know, something that's happened or, or you know, that's there's something very prominent in their lives at the minute that they're that they know they need to either address or talk about, and they're not ready to do that, you know. Mm. So, um, and yeah, I can't remember where I was going. But... <laughs> I think no, I think so. Okay, maybe, and I'm I probably got this wrong as well. But we were talking about people collecting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. As part of as part of some fitness package, it's like I, the more stuff I get, then it's more valuable. That's and then you're obviously talking about the you know, the yeah paying for the result versus paying for an hourly rate. Mm-hmm. Are two very different things, and that's where you go. Yeah, with. definitely, definitely. And I think someone, I remember someone telling me a good analogy about that. It's like you going to. What did someone say? Going to one of the islands or something, going to the highlands in Scotland, and you rock up and you get a car to hire. Now, the car, the hire, the hire car guy could say to you, I've got this most amazing car. It's got all these all these features, da, 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 give you all this whole list of things. Brilliant car, you're going to love it, absolutely. And he's talking about how amazing this car is. But at the end of the day, all you want to do is to be able to drive around the island and see the things that you want to see, enjoy the trip, take in the views. Does it really matter what's going on in the car? No. Yeah? Yep. All you need is a car. What it does, the bells and whistles, irrelevant. You, you, you won't use is the car going to take you to the places so that you can make the most memories of that trip that you want to mm. and enjoy it and remember it? And you know, for for many days to come, that's what you want. It's got electric windows, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. So that, and I just thought, yeah, okay, that's good. So next time you're going on holidays, just think about what is it that you really want to value on that holiday. You know, is it the memories? Is it the place? Or is it the is it the swanky hotel that does all these things, but you're never actually spending time in it? so true and i think you can apply that so much to fitness yeah. it's, you know like i said we said earlier people i've got this i'm getting this you're getting this you're getting this and they list out these amount of things that they've got and i'm like great where is it all mm. and they're like um <laughs> i think i've got a link here somewhere <laughs> connecting yeah. yes yeah Absolutely, absolutely. So, I, and that's the difference. It's, it's, it's the bigger picture, isn't it? It's the, it's the feeling of how you're going to be. It's the, it's just seeing yourself and holding yourself to a higher standard than what you do now. That's what we do. That's what we help people do, because we see huge potential in people. They're just not able to see it themselves. So we help them to see it. Get out of their own way. Mm, absolutely. Not more bad. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's funny. It's, it's a similar conversation I've had with. I you. do actually still program burpees. I have to say. Oh God. Not not in that and in, in, in and like a slow movement type thing, just to get some movement going into that person. Okay, fair enough then. Not. I just want to throw you on the ground and make you do. No, I actually make them kind of break down and do a slow. Do you actually write a program, not just give them a load of exercises? Yeah. 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 That's, that makes sense, yeah. totally. Just to build up some kind of movement and get them used to getting to the ground and things like that. Getting yeah, up and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 bit that. of functional, a bit of functioning sort of movement. So, yeah. But yeah, that makes sense. Not just to get their heart rate. <laughs> make it play. Make them hurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but have DOMS the next day or it's not worth yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But it's funny, it's like we, it's this conversation I've had with you, people like Ted, it just seems to be a reoccurring theme of people who have moved from doing PT to 
actually I've realized PT's not where it's at, it's actually coaching and changing people's lives. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I can't like, don't get me wrong, like PT's, you know, get personal training, loved it and really, really good, you know, and and I think for people who have a specific kind of fitness or, you know, goal if you like or or looking to work on something in particular definitely go to go to a trainer go to a personal trainer or, or a coach and that that can help you with those things but mm -hmm. for weight loss and and for for you know women that just want to get back to feeling good and get back to exercising or whatever it is for them then yeah coaching is just so much more valuable for them yeah so. you'd be better spend you'd be better saving up all those 40 pound hours and just actually hiring yeah. a coach because you'll get there so much more quicker amen mic drop from jillian <laughs> two mic drops oh, oh sorry <laughs> two mics <laughs> <laughs> cool so i'm going to use a little trick that you used to do to everybody else that used to come on the show when we were together yeah um so what's your fab four bits of advice for a woman looking to change their body their health and their mindset what would be your top four things that they should think about first before doing making the jump um number one would be to <laughs> work on your morning routine for people okay yeah. not saying that you have to have some crazy morning routine we got five o'clock and <laughs> oh, yeah. do a fun salutation or something <laughs> or jump in a plunge pool or whatever um because the women that i see the biggest success with are the women that would start and do things for themselves first thing in the morning nice like it okay so whatever that is, that's the time. If you are looking to make changes to yourself and for yourself, mm -hmm. then yeah, certainly start in the morning with any of those changes, with any changes. Cool. The next thing is getting your sleep. Sleep is so underrated. Um, and I do know what it's like to not have proper sleep for quite a while. But anyhow, that's been rectified now. So I'm feeling a million times better. Um, but to, you know, again, get into a regular sleep pattern. Certainly as, as women, as we get older, you know, and, and if we're talking about women and menopause and things like that as well, if you get that regularity, that will just help and have such a knock-on effect to everything else that's going on in your body right now. Because um, I know sleep obviously is can be really disruptive for women. Yeah. Where, you know, with the with, uh, heat and, and just waking up, yeah, the body temperature flies all over the place. So, but if you can get into a regular getting up time, that will really, really help you to just get into a regular sleeping pattern for you as well. Mm -hmm. And also to move your body in the morning. That's my third thing. Um, to get up and ideally get out for a walk, just to get your body moving. Again, first thing in the morning, or or you know, in the morning, your body has got its most amount of energy and cortisol, and and everything else is kicking off. So it's good time to actually start to propel that fuel around your body, um, and get yourself out for a walk. And then. What would I say my fourth thing is, is to just totally back yourself. I think the biggest thing that women fail to do is to spend money on themselves. Oof. Wow. My job. Yeah. And again, I'm speaking from experience here as well, from holding the self back, thinking that, and, and it tends to be, I'm not sure if this is going to work or I'm not sure if I'm going to do this. And it's just perpetuating that, that you're waiting or you're waiting for some sign or whatever. But usually I would say to anybody, if you're feeling nervous about doing something, 
but you know that you could do it if you really want to. It's usually a sign that it's time for you to take that step forward. Yep. You know, and Greg, you've probably heard it, but lots of, you know, people that you've worked with and things that they were like, after a week or, or just talking to you or whatever, they're like, oh, wish I had done this sooner. Yeah. Oh, so it's a million percent. Yeah. Yeah. And I've probably even said it to myself, getting help from people, I wish I'd have done this sooner, you know, and and we do, and we, we hold us back and we let the mind take over and tell, give us all these logical reasons why we're nuts and we're crazy and we shouldn't do anything, but oh my God, just do it, do it. <laughs> and, that's, and, and that's the irony. Back yourself. Yeah, the irony, we both have coaches in our lives, so it's yeah. like, you know, it's, it is we're actually living the truth because we're saying, well, look, we, we've probably done it. We've dabbled on little bits here, little bits here, yeah. London hours here, 100 quid masterclass here, you know, that the same stuff. And actually, we've probably had our best growth when we've gone, actually, no, I'm just going to go and put some money behind me and yeah. just go do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's just, it is that, it's just that, it's it's an energy exchange, isn't it? It's It's that, it's making yourself and holding yourself to that higher standard and by investing significantly in a problem that you are not able to solve by yourself because you would have done it if you could have. But when you invest significantly, it's almost a fear of actually being able to solve that. You got so used to never solving this problem that, that it's almost become the comfort zone but like 40 pounds an hour every week so. yeah that's just chipping away and never getting you anywhere but if you just bypass all that go straight to someone that can help you yeah be done once and for all you know like and even like the you know women that we work with you know, they have lost significant weight in the past mm -hmm. they have done it in the past but they could never keep it off keep it off and now I have women who are like going, just something's different in my mind. Just this, just feels different. It just, and it's because it's not. Here's a workout, and here's what you need to eat today. It's what's what are you willing to do, and what do you want to do? You know, someone's asking you. Someone's giving you that power to go. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to do? Yeah, giving them the power. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 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 I, I think I rambled on again. <laughs> I know, it's all, it's all, that's been perfect. Um, uh, we, we should because we can. I know we can go off on so many tangents, and I think yeah. you know it's probably need a, a, another comeback episode. But where can people find you? Oh yeah, hanging out Facebook, LinkedIn. They are my homes um, where I hang out in social media. So just just look me up, Gillian Davis, um, and and that's where you'll find me. Awesome. Main places, so yeah, I awesome. don't I don't hide in many places. So that's it. I keep it simple. <laughs> Gillian Davies on LinkedIn and on Facebook, people. If you wanna yeah. listen to what Gillian has to say, she says some good stuff. Go hang out with her. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Sure. So, are we gonna get another another podcast date? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, man, that sounds good. Yeah, cool. Maybe it should be a monthly thing. <laughs> we can do it once a month. Oh, no, I see how this works. You see that? I'm still that works. back in here. Like, like, oh, oh, I'll do a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No, uh, I just love. As you can tell, Greg and I, we, we we can chat for ages and lots of things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Okay, cool. That sounds like a plan. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Cool. All right. If so, if you're listening back to this on on Apple. Leave a review, share this with friends and family, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Peace out, people. Peace out. See ya. Bye. Oh. Drop a mic. <laughs> 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 Didn't know you were going to.